Hey everybody, Bill Panoff here for Porthole Cruise and Travel, and we're here at the, a legend next to me, not only a great friend, but uh, a luminary in the cruise industry, Bob Dickinson. Bob, how are you? I'm doing great, Bill. How are you? Great. 51 years of cruising. Hard to believe. It just seems like probably 51 years ago. Tell me, the top, in the beginning, what, how has it changed from 51 years ago to the present? Wow. So I was started in 72, uh, and... Back then, I think there were about half a million people a year that took cruises. Right. Uh, it was less than one half percent of the U.S. population that had ever cruised before. Uh, it was it was for old people and their parents. Right. It was the average age was deceased. <laughs> um, it was a very very limited market. A lot of it was done by um, uh, using. Uh, folks at the hotels to give them a little money to talk, you know, talk to the all the gakas when it was a rainy or cold and they're schlitzing in, right. in Miami Beach and maybe you can get them on a short cruise. Very, very primitive stuff for the most part. But you took Carnival from this small cruise line with one or two or three ships at the time I joined to this managed company and you built cruising and you created the awareness of cruising among the consumers. Well, it was a whole team that built Carnival. I can't take all the credit for right. that. Uh, but yes, at the, at the time, everybody that was our competitors was focusing on what they perceived to be their business, which is the cruise industry. And we took a different approach. We said, we're not in the cruise industry. We're in the vacation industry. Vacation industry. So rather than look at this very small segment of one, well, less than 1% of the vacation industry called cruising, worrying about market share in that less than 1%, we looked at the whole market. and so. Uh, back then, our you know competition as it is today is land-based resort and sightseeing destination. So we looked at it. And to this day, you're still a very avid cruiser. I mean, you take multiple cruises during the year. And what would be wrong? That <laughs> happened. I live for cruising. So from a cruise ship that carried 800 passengers, you know, 50 years ago, to a vessel that carries 6,000 passengers, what is different? Uh, there's a lot more passengers. <laughs> So many things are different. I mean, first of all, we widen the demographic and the psychographic sure. of our of our passengers. So now it's virtually every man with a capital E, and the only people we don't want are people that are miserable. We don't want them on cruise ships, but everybody else. So we have, you know, uh, families where before, as I said, the average age was whatever, uh, and now we have three, four generations cruising together. Uh, come from all over the country, it's not just Miami Beach, New sure. York, and the, and the Eastern Seaboard, uh, all over the United States, Canada, around the world. It's really a, a global experience. If someone is on the fence about cruising because they heard from someone, well, I'm not quite sure, how would you change their mind? Yeah, you know, I, I think the responsibility for selling cruises now to first timers isn't with the cruise lines anymore. I know that must sound paradoxical. You know, everybody has friends. Right. And if you know friends that are not cruising and you're good friends with them, you owe it to them to promote the cruise experience sure. because you know what they've been missing. Sure. They don't know about it until they try it. Sure. We can talk all day long, but you got to try it. And uh, it's such an extraordinary experience. Uh, there's cruises now for everybody, every walk of life, every demographic, every psychographic. Uh, ships are huge floating resorts. Ships go to smaller ships that go to expedition cruises where you couldn't practically go there any other way. Sure. It's, it's an extraordinary panoply of product offerings for every taste, every vacation, every length of cruise. Uh, you know, most of the world is, is salt water. That's where we are. We go everywhere. We can go to the Northwest Passage. We can go to Antarctica. We can go everywhere. But Don't forget to stay tuned next week for part two of the three-part interview with cruise legend Bob Dickinson on YouTube channel Cruise and Travel with Bill Panoff. And don't forget to subscribe below for everything cruising. <laughs>